Welcome to Biggest Little Library. It's Tammy and Amy with the Friday Four, four quick recommendations we think you'll love. And this week, yes. because we re-released our Willie Vlatton episode on Tuesday, I just, cheers, I yay, just have to tell you, I'm so in love with him. He's the greatest author. He is terrific. I loved his book. Still have Lean on Pete ready to read, but... Do you know what's Hitmer. sitting on my table right now is your Don't favorite. Don't skip out on me. Don't skip out on me. I, I actually it. got a chapter into it and then I had to put it down because I was trying to finish another book. You have this problem, right? Exactly. And so it's sitting there and it's like bite sizable because the one I just finished was like 600 pages. So I'm yes. like, oh, I'm ready to go back to Willie Blotton. Yes. So. so our Friday Four are all either Nevada authors or set in Nevada mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. So you found one I'd never heard of. I know. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, hang on. I'm going to pull it up for you. It is called Battle Born, which you know is our state motto. motto. It's our yeah. state motto. And yeah. if you did not know that, if you're not living in Nevada, that's kind of our claim to fame is that we're Battle Born because we were brought into the Union during the Civil War. Right, exactly. history teacher? Yes. Did I get that right? 1864. Yeah. <laughs> 1864. So Battle Born is actually by the author Claire Vays Watkins, or Vay Watkins. And it looks like it's a collection of short stories. And you know how we've had this conversation before where yeah. I didn't know I was a short story reader. In fact, I kind yeah. of thought I wasn't. And then I got into some really good Mm -hmm. short stories. And so I'm very intrigued by what she has um, here. This was the winner of the 2012 Story Prize recipient of the 2012 American Academy of Arts and Letters. I mean, like it's, it looks like it's getting a lot of praise. Now it is a little bit older, Mm -hmm. but what I, what's intriguing to me is she has kind of, I can see that it's going to be, you know, you've got a brothel in there. You've got Vegas in there. You've Mm -hmm. got some hermit that's living in like the middle of nowhere in Nevada. And it's funny when we were trying to look up things that were by Nevada authors or set in Nevada, we really just found there was a bit of a vacuum there. There's not a lot. Right. There's academic yeah. texts, I think, like yeah. with um, Dick Davies and Warren LaRude, who are amazing writers, but they're yes. more academic, I yes. think. Yeah. And so we have a couple of like staples, like I know you're going to talk about a couple of our staple authors, mm-hmm. but I feel like... I haven't heard of her at all. No. And she did spend some time living in Pahrump, so that's okay. Nevada. Um, uh, so I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued <laughs> to pick it up. It is Nevada, but it is, it, we're just, we have been read, watching Get Shorty, which is set in Pahrump. Really? Quirky. Very quirky. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> You're shaking yeah. your head like, I don't no, know if you want to check do it not out. Love. <laughs> do not love. <laughs> so... All right. But I am really curious about that book. I know. I'm going to mm-hmm. totally buy it for the library. Yeah. It just feels like it'd be a really good read to have in our library. But the cover, mm-hmm. check out the cover. It's gorgeous. It is pretty. Yeah. Clouds. It looks, it looks like Nevada. Looks like it does. Nevada and there, I think that's a, well, no, it's not a lenticular cloud, but we have high winds mm-hmm. and lenticular clouds here. That's true. For all the geography people listening. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Matt. Matt, are you listening? (laughs) Okay. Okay, So what do you have over there? All right. So I really wanted to talk about this next author, and that is Ellen Hopkins. I don't think you can talk about Nevada authors or books without talking about Ellen. She's She's a local author. Famous. She is, lives in Washoe Valley, Mm -hmm. and um, she's very supportive of the schools and of writing here. She's been to many schools. She wrote, the book I wanted to talk about is Crank, and it is the first in the series of Crank, and then the second one was Glass, and the third one is Fallout. Mm -hmm. And it is really the story of her daughter, who um, went to Minogue and Reno High, I think, both of them, and her struggle with drugs. Yeah. It's so, pretty raw. It is. It's written in verse, which I think is really interesting. And I love the way she actually has created patterns. Yes. So there's like a teardrop and all the words make the teardrop yeah. and stair steps and all of these things that are very um, symbolic of what's going on with the characters as you read through. It's, you know, it's one of those books that is super thick. It's like 537 pages. It's funny because when you look at it, it looks daunting. But right. when you open it, you could read it in a couple mm-hmm. of hours. Yes. And kids love it it's Mm -hmm. one of those books that in the whole series and really everything she writes but it's one of those books that you show them and they're like I don't know if I can read it you open it and you talk about you know how quick it is to read and I think they're really good for adults too I I don't think this is really just a kid's book and so 
Um, I wanted to make sure I talked about. I feel like Ellen. if you have teenagers, it might be an important read as a parent to read because mm-hmm. it's, it's so many kids read it, and I right. think it's important to read what your kids are reading. Right. And you know, when you come into a high school library, we let them take what they want. Like, right. there's no, are you old enough for this? And there's some very mature mm-hmm. things that happen in that book. It's definitely gritty, and I think mm-hmm. it, it. You're right. It is a good book for parents to read because her. Um, involvement in drugs was so quick. Oh, and then the addiction happened so quickly, yeah. and she still struggles. Yeah. So, yeah. good choice. It is a good book. Okay. And then I wanted to talk about another book. This is by an older Nevada writer. This mm-hmm. is Robert Laxalt, and he is the Laxalt family is really a, the quintessential Basque mm-hmm. family in mm-hmm. Nevada. We do have a, a real history of um, Basque immigrants coming Mm -hmm. here and they were the sheep herders. And about a month ago was really the time that you see the Basque sheep herders because they bring the flocks of sheep, the working dogs that work them. They're very distinct sheep herder trailers. Uh And the sheep eat all the cheek grass that are, um, you know, it's really a problem in fire season, which, right. you know, <laughs> the West is almost always on fire. I know. Um, knock on wood. We hopefully no no fires. I know. Um, it's not looking good for us this year. I, I know. I know. But so he is a Basque American and this one is Sweet Promised Land and he's written quite a few I know the Basque Hotel is a great one that's out of print, mm-hmm. uh, but your local library. I know. Definitely well, you know that. what's funny is I literally have Sweet Promised Land like sitting mm-hmm. over there because I was going to take it home over the summer yeah. because I feel like it's a it's a Nevada must read. You it have is. to read a Laxall book if you're living in Nevada and you're a Nevadan, it I, is. I would think. And it's really about how um, he and his family, so there are still family members in the French Pyrenees. Mm-hmm. And so it's about the character here. And I think it's Dominique. And I think it is Dominique. Um, and how he's persuaded by the family to return home to the French Pyrenees. And how he realizes that he really is a Nevadan. Yeah. An American and specifically a Nevadan. And so it's kind of that push and pull of the beauty of the French Pyrenees right. and the Basque culture there and then coming here. And it's a struggle here. Like it's not, mm-hmm. they weren't well treated. You know, the there's always that cattle, sheep, you know, rancher mm-hmm. um, conflict. So Tams, it sounds like a really good novel. It was wonderful. I read it in college and it was one of those that I kept Aww, you know, after I yeah. read it for, for my college class. And it's just a, it's just a great story about how... You know, there's a difficulty of being here because mm-hmm. the immigrants, you know, had such a hard time and the families back in, in uh, the French Pyrenees. And I will say we still have that, the Basque heritage here in, yes. in the Basque restaurants. So I know for yeah. good eats. Exactly. Go right Family down. style. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, All right. What's your sweet last promise one? Round. Sweet promised land. Okay. So my last one, and this is kind of cute. I picked uh, Wild at Heart, Mustangs and the Young People Fighting to Save Them by Terry Farley. And the reason I picked that is because I've met darling Terry Farley yes. at the Nevada um, Reader's Week or whatever. Yeah, what was that called? What was it called? It's like Nevada Reading Week or Nevada something. Nevada Reading Week. Yeah. 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 Nevada Reading Week. And she's adorable. Many parents probably will recognize her a fiction series, which is Phantom Stallion. And I think yes. there are like 24 of them. So I think that's upper elementary, middle school. Mm-hmm. You know, all the girls that want a horse. Yes. You know, read those. And I picked this because Terry partnered with Melissa Farlow and she's the photographer. And, you know, the Mustangs are um, something that we're known for out here in the mm-hmm. West too. But not and everyone loves the I Mustangs. Know, I know. Because they really are domestic horses that were let loose, you know, back in the in the days of the Spanish coming through here. So, but people want to preserve them, which that's great. Um, but they are pests for a whole other group of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she really wanted to show the beauty of these horses and you can see them yeah. you know all throughout our community and when you head uh, east of here and the photography is beautiful the text is beautiful she really enjoyed writing a non-fiction uh, book and I think it's great especially if you if you if your kids are reading the phantom stallion put them right into this wild at heart because yeah it's it, they really should be reading more non-fiction but this is accessible and it's great for adults too it's not just a kid's book but it is about those 
those uh, Mustangs out here in the West. Yeah, that we sometimes see as we're driving. You see them running. Yes. Like in the desert. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. We're in the wild west. We are. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, great, Tams. Yeah. For other great book recommendations, check out our blogs on our website at biggestlittlelibrary.net. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, click the link right in the show notes to head over to our website. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter. And join us next Tuesday because we have a great re-release. It's one of my favorite episodes of the entire year. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you're going to love it. Remember, all of these books are listed in our show notes. See you in the stacks. stacks.